everyone how you doing today i'm back with another video and in today's video we have an alienware laptop this one is an alienware m15 r2 model and in this video i'm gonna take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can repaste and clean up the fan and the heat sink and or the motherboard included it's really easy it's not too hard you can follow the video i'll show you step by step how to take it apart and how you clean it and how you can put it back together and because i see all those videos then i will show you guys how to put it back together the proper way in this video i'm going to go over a step by step everything on detail how you can do it remember by repasting you're not going to modify anything in the system the files you're not going to lose or anything like that it's totally safe so you don't have to back up your files or anything like that if yours is running hot or you're getting really the air, hot air is not coming out because it's clogged you can do this service every few years all right first thing first we're going to power it off i'm going to go over the tools that i'll be using to do this service and the links for these tools are going to be in my video description you can get yours tool number one is a good screwdriver set is a really must i recommend you guys to grab the ifix screwdriver set i bought this one with my own money so they're not sponsoring or anything like that these are made out of s2 class steel they're really tough and steel they sell the basic set which is this one and if you purchase the pro set it comes with the uh, tweezers and some you know, opening tools like that if not grab your you know, spatula plastic spatula it will be nice to have for the opening tool i'll be using a screw uh, guitar pick and metal guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and cover make sure it's a really tough one and a uh, tweezer a pointy or curved tweezers are really handy. All right, with all this on hand, we're gonna flip it upside down, and on the bottom cover, we're gonna see a whole bunch of screws. We're gonna start removing the two screws on the far back end here. These are removable screws, so you're gonna put them in one side, remove both of them. They are both the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching. The rest of the screws, they have a little C lock on them on the other side, so it will prevent from the screw coming up entirely. So all you need to do is just twist it and let it go like that and do this. And once you start twisting, you're going to see the front cover coming up, separating from itself. That's a good thing. So keep doing that. Also, if you guys like my videos, if my videos are helping you guys out to do your own repaste, cleaning upgrades, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Helps and motivates, it, motivates me to make more videos, take requests and answer your questions in the comment area. All right, now that we loosen up the screws, we're going to realize that, or you're going to realize that there is a little space in here that opened up. So you can put your fingernail or opening tool in here, and you want to pull it upward and bring it towards yourself so you can release the back uh, little tips right there that goes underneath. You can take it outside and use a toothbrush to clean it up and blow some air through here, but they do get some kind of dirty. Right down here, we're gonna see a few dirty fans right in here that are actually nice and dirty. Before we do anything, we're gonna disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, we're gonna pull this cable backward. If it's not coming out, use a spatula, put it right in the middle here, and slide it towards yourself. And try to help it by pulling the battery cable towards yourself, and like that. And you can disconnect it. Next, we're gonna remove the two M.2 SSDs in here by removing one screw on each at the far back end of it. Because this running at the RAID in configuration, you can actually mark them to know which one is what. I'm gonna mark this one R for right, and this is for left. And all you need to do is to bring it up in five degree, no more, and pull it towards yourself, and you're gonna disconnect that one. Again, bring it up, pull it towards yourself, and it gets disconnected. Next, we're going to remove the battery by removing one, two, three, four, five screw, and six. One right at the back here. Remove this screw to remove the battery. And you do have to remove the battery to be able to remove the motherboard. People keep asking, do I have to remove the battery? Yes, you do. There we go. Now we can just lift up the battery from front end upward and slide it forward, backward and bring it out, put it to one side. I'll put it right away here. 
All right. Now with the other hand, we're gonna start lifting up this one a little bit. And we're gonna disconnect this cable right in here. Just add a little adhesive, pull it up. Bring it up like that. This is for the back, the lighting at the back grill. So bring it up and just twist, push it backward, or pull it up, just push backward. Bring it up, put it to one side. We're gonna remove the back grill right here by removing two screws right in here. So I don't know if it's not focusing. So I'll remove these two screws. All right. Once you remove these two screws, you can just grab it and pull it up, pull it towards the outside, and then you can get this connected. Right. So there is a cable that goes for the back light right there. Put this one to the back end. Now we're gonna remove this isolating shield. Just peel it off. Dump it right over there. You can remove this one too if you want to, but it's not necessary. You can leave it or remove it, doesn't matter. We're gonna remove the flex cable for the back LC for the LCD. Lift up this hinge over like that and pull this. I can't do it with one hand. Oh, it also has a little for the camera right in here. You have to disconnect this one. So I'm gonna pull this one out, out of here. So I'm just gonna slide it back like that. There we go. And now I'm gonna lift up the lock upward and I'm gonna pull it towards myself. There we go. So it just pretty much it slides it back. And bring it to one side, leave it like that. We're gonna disconnect this fan cable right away here. The fan cable right away here, just by pulling the jack from the side from the earlobes backward. Okay, the power connected power jack is right in here. We need to disconnect this one too. So let's go ahead and bring it up a little bit. It is really tight in here. I don't know why. The really short cable. So pretty much you have to pull it back. There we go, like that. Once you did that, we're gonna remove this Wi-Fi cable, uh, screw for the Wi-Fi cable holder. So a tiny screw. Remove this one. Put it to one side. The Wi-Fi antennas, they just snap on, snap off. So put it underneath and snap it up on. And you have to untangle it from there. Bring it up, put it to one side. I'm guessing this is for more camera or something like that so this is for camera connector i'm guessing or just pull the jack backward for the back end now we're gonna remove the fan screws right in here so remove two screws on this fan and three screws on the other one this fan will not come up because it has it's right under this board right in here so let's go to this one for a second Okay, once we remove this one, let me see if I can lift up the fan. So the fan it, it is attached to the with the tape to the heat seam. We're just gonna loosen up the screws. And we're gonna remove these two bridges right in here for the Wi-Fi and USB. And again for Ethernet and extra audio jack. So remove these two screws. You can only remove the screw on one of them. You don't have to remove both of them. So remove the screw from one side. And then lift up the jack. Let me see. Let me remove this one. I don't want to damage the cable, so go ahead and remove both of them to preventing damage. There we go. Has a little tiny pins on it that touches the pins in there. So I remember this one has that. It says MB for motherboard, so the side that says MB has to be touching this end. So remove this side too. And put it to one. I'll put it on this. We're gonna remove the 
This one it goes for the BIOS battery. I'm not gonna disconnect the BIOS battery because I don't wanna remove the configuration for the BIOS, so it has a lot of adhesive. So I'm gonna lift it up from here, remove the adhesive, bring it to this side. So let's go ahead and loosen up this board right in here because it, the fan goes right under the board. So remove the two screws on this board and the board should come out pretty loose, pretty easy. And there we go. This one goes under, comes over like that. So I'm going to leave this BIOS battery connected. And leave this one over on one side. Now you can actually, it's easy to remove. In this side, we're not going to remove this board. We're going to remove this one right in here. This is for some sensors right in here. So lift up the jack 90 degree upward and pull the cable backward has a little adhesive in here so i'm going to detach the adhesive and then i'm going to pull it back there we have it now let's go ahead and remove the screw for here for this plastic that comes here right over the m.2s okay we're going to remove this screw right away here and two screws at the back there are three of them actually, one right at the corner too. Okay, now let me see if there's more screws in here or not. So I'm gonna detach this one. No, I don't see any more screws, there's no more screws. So we can put this one back on. Okay. Now we should be able to lift up the motherboard from here. Hold it from the back, from the front. The power, uh, this is for the trackpad cable. So what I'm gonna do, and this cable, it's attached to something, let me see. On the bottom, there's nothing attached to it. But this cable, it is attached. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the adhesive on this one. Detach it from the bottom here. Remove, open up the cap and Remove this cable, it slowly detach the adhesive, and this is the BIOS battery, leave it on, and bring it upward, bring it up, and pull it back. And there you have the motherboard. So as you can see, there's no RAM DIMMs or anything available in here, as I mentioned on my other video that for upgrading the RAM. So now that we have this one on hand, we're gonna put this, whole bottom case to one side and we're gonna work on this one let me find a place to put this one all right so there we have it so we're gonna keep the bio cmos battery in there it's absolutely safe and the reason i didn't want to pull this cable because it has a little tape over and it's hard to get to this tape from the other side all right now we have detached the fan cable we're going to remove all the screws for GPU and CPU starting from one corner. So remove all these tiny screws. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. All right, once we remove all the screws, now all we need to do is to lift up the heatsink, bring it up, and flip it over. And there you have, and there you can see the whole vram chips right over here and the normal ram right here so and there's an old thermo paste which is already dried up right over so we're gonna put the motherboard to one side for now and we're gonna start cleaning up you do not need to remove the thermo pads in here the thermo pads are absolutely fine you don't need to put anything and don't put any thicker ones because it's going to counter push the heat sink away from the CPU or GPU and you're going to get a horrible result. So I would highly recommend you to keep the same thermal pad. The thermal pads, they will last you many years so you don't have to actually replace them. If you don't want to replace them, I'm going to go over the size on them. This one is a get one millimeter. This is a one millimeter, one millimeter. These are pretty much all of them. They're one millimeter thickness. So there we have it. So let me just make sure that it's just one millimeter by measuring it. So I'm gonna use my digital calipers to measure the thickness of the 
one of the thermal pads, one millimeter thickness. So you can replace it with one millimeter thickness thermal pads, but honestly, the thermal pads that they have, they are pretty good. You don't need to replace them. All right. Now we're gonna remove the fans from here to clean up the fan system. There's a tiny screws right on the fan. We're gonna remove those. And those are screws Phillips number double zero. So grab your double zero and remove the tiny screws on each fan right away here. All right, once we remove the screws, now we can lift it up and make sure that there is no more yet. Now the fan, here there's a little adhesive that they have tape over here. You can just rip this tape away. You can actually cut the tape if you want with the color. Right there. And you can lift it up this way. You can get a gaffer's tape to tape it on, but actually you don't need to, that's fine. And you can see this kind of dust build up in here. You want to remove all this and you want to take it outside with a toothbrush, clean it up nicely, clean up all those fins and everything like that. So I'm going to take it outside, clean up the fins, and I'll be back right after this and I'm going to show you guys how to clean up and repaste. All right, now that I took it outside and blow some dry air with a dry compressor, I will leave the link for the dry compressor in my video description again if you need to purchase yours. Once we cleaned it up, we're going to close up the leads the fans and we're going to tighten up the tiny screws that we removed from here. This is the proper way of doing it. Some people just open it up and repaste. That's not a good solution. You need to clean up the fan system nicely. Put the tiny screws. Once we did that, now we're going to clean up the thermal paste. You need a one sheet of the workshop towel. Again, this all, you can get them at any hardware store, one sheet. And you need an isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol, 100% or 99%. You're going to grab, cut a little bit of this one and we're going to soak it up in an alcohol. And we're going to wipe and clean the old thermal paste of this heat sink. Also, I'm going to show you a trick to make it even better because I can see this decoloration and there's a little tiny layer of oxidization on the copper, which is not a good thing. So we need to get that true copper exposed. All right, to get the maximum result from this copper, what we're going to do, we're going to grab a, a silver cleaning solution or copper cleaning solution, whatever you can get your hands on from jewelry store, jewelry cleaning. And we're going to grab a cotton tip. It can be a paste or it can be a liquid format. If you can get a liquid, it's better. So you're going to dip the type right in there. With one is enough. This one smells really... All right, now what we're going to do once we start cleaning, look at the difference that you're going to see in here. You see that difference? That exposes the true copper and you're gonna get a way better temperature readings and cool down. So you wanna clean up the both CPU and GPU right here. And make sure nice and clean. So that's a true copper exposed right there. Okay, we're gonna put this one to one side and I can trash this Q-tip. Where it smells. Now we're gonna bring the motherboard. We're gonna do the same thing without the cleaning solution. You do not want to put cleaning solution on this one. All you need to do is to clean up the CPU. Um pretty sure this is RTX 3070 or 3060. GPU. You need to clean up the CPU die. You don't have to worry about the components around it. So you don't have to clean up the capacitors or anything like that. It's totally fine. Absolutely, you don't need to clean up. Just clean up the die as much as you can. 
and don't go around trying to clean up the capacitor because you can damage the the, the thermal paste around the capacitor. Just clean up the die, do a few passes, use a new dry sheet to polish that crystal die. Just do a nice polishing right on top. And that should be all. Make sure there's no dust or anything on top. Once you have it like that, all you need to do is to Grab your thermal paste. You can use whatever thermal paste you want. In this case, the client uh, wants me to use an Arctic MX4. You can use a uh, thermal greasy cry or not. These are really good. I'll leave the link again in my video description. Whatever thermal paste that you feel that it's the best, but the best one is the thermal greasy cry or not. A little expensive, but it's worth it. So what you want to do, you want to put a tiny line on the CPU and one X shape right on the GPU die. Just like that. Don't worry about it. The way that you paste it, honestly, there's a whole myth about going cross, left, right, dot, in the middle, P side, whatever you wanna do, you can do it. It will spread and it will be all fine. We have tried it in many other ways that people Doing it, I have a video on which way that you're supposed to do it. To put the thermal paste, they all give you the same result. And anyway, once you have the thermal paste in there, all you need to do is to bring the heatsink back down. Right on top, make sure the screw holes match. Put it right there, set it, make sure all the screw well, You don't want to lift it up again. If you lift it up, you have to repaste. Make sure you do not pick up. There's a number one. Where is that? Two, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, but I'll rather go across. So I'm gonna put the first uh, number two in the middle first. I'm gonna tighten up that one, not too tight, a little bit. Then I'm gonna go to number one, cross each other, always cross it through them. Switch back again to Phillips number, cross the screw always. And then I'm gonna go to number five, to other side. The reason for the screws are for the thermal paste can be spread evenly across the GPU and CPU. I find the most effective way is the way I just did. Is like a two, one, five, six, and then you can do number three. And the last one, number four. And there we go. Now you can actually grab it. Don't be scared of grabbing the motherboard by your hand. You don't have to put the strap or grounding or anything like that as long as you don't rub your hand on your hair or anything like that you are fine tighten up the screws nicely all the way in there we have it now we're going to put this to one side and we're going to bring the whole case again back here you can clean up this uh, dust mesh right in here. It, it breathes through here too, so you can go ahead and take it outside and clean it. This keyboard is really nice. It has an RGB, has a lots of LEDs. Pretty nice. All right, so we're gonna grab the motherboard. We're gonna bring it like this. Align it straight over. Move this cable out of the way. Move the fan cables. You want to bring it, set it down. The cables has to come from the top to bottom, so don't go sliding away. And once it's down, go ahead and first put the fan cable connector. Those are really important. You see this one stays underneath, so you forget about it. So make sure you put the fan cables first, so you don't forget about those. Okay, slide those in. I'm going to bring the this power jack connector, I'm going to slide it evenly to the jack and I'm going to snug it right in there. Bring the connector for the LCD. Make sure you slide it into the jack all the way in. has to close down and bring the lock over and lock it down. And this webcam, whatever, microphone connector, whatever it is, just slide it to the jack and Make sure it goes all the way in, nice and snugly. 
this other one right in here too there we go bring this wi-fi connector through here you have to snuggle right underneath here it goes zigzag right underneath uh, beside the fan and we're gonna snap down the wi-fi connector just put it on top and just push it down it will just click in its place there we go there we have it make sure this cable stays right there we're gonna grab the wi-fi connector the holder you're gonna screw that one in so the cables don't jump down you're gonna grab this bridge cable connectors we're gonna put it right on top align it there we have it and put the flat head screws right over okay now we're gonna work on this side put this cable over hug this one bring it over bring this one right through here set it right on top make sure the screw hole matches and there should be two screws on this one one right over here I want to ride that across over here. You're gonna put the bridge connector right in here. Over and put the two flat screws right on top. Now go run this BIOS battery right in its place. Put the connector right in there and snuggle this one's right underneath doesn't matter whatever you just put it right underneath you'll be fine now we need to connect this connector right to the trackpad slide it right in the jack once it's all the way in lock put it push the lock over open up the lock for this one Bring it down in 45 degree towards the jack all the way inside and then lock it down. Grab this one for M.2 holders. I don't know why they even need it, but put it there. Put the screw for this one. And the screws for the motherboard. There should be one right over here and three should be at the far back. All right, I don't know if I'm, oh, I'm missing the screws for the fan. Put the two screws for the fan on the right fan and three screws for the left fan. There we have. I right, make sure everything is connected nicely. Yeah. We want to grab the isolating cover in here. We want to put the cover right there and tape it down make sure it's a little adhesive it holds it in place we are going to grab the back cover grill grill cover i'm guessing that's whatever you call this one you want to slide it right over bring it slide this cable can be under over doesn't matter whatever you want to do with this one bring it under lift it up and slide it towards the jack Connect it or don't connect it, it makes it no difference. That's for the backlighting. So if you don't like it, just disconnect it. Grab the battery, slide the battery bottom to the front end of the laptop, bring it down, move this one out of the way, move this one out of the way, and leave it like that. And put the screws for the battery. There should be like a five, six of them. There should be one on the each side, one at the back only. You don't want to put the corner front ends. So do not put this one and do not put this one. So put the 
ones that you can see right at, on the top. Remember there is one hidden one right under this one here. And there should be one beside the Wi-Fi. And one at the left and one mid bottom by the cable. Okay. And the last thing down here is to grab your SSD, slide, make sure the notch matches and slide them right through the jack in 5-10 degree and push them inside the jack and make sure the screw holes fall right on the gap. Same thing here. Gap and put the two tiny screws at the back of the M.2 SSDs. Okay, once you're done with this one, the last thing is make sure the battery connector goes evenly inside the connector all the way back. Don't forget to put the two screws for the back grill cover here. It goes one right there. And the other one goes right beside it, right in here. There we have it. And that should cover this video pretty much. And the last thing is to grab the bottom cover, put the back end right under the heat sink right there and bring it down and tighten up the screws and put the two screws at the back. I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Also, don't forget to click that like and subscribe to support the channel. And I'm gonna power on to see if it works. There we are. So let's get the charger. And let's go ahead and power on. So I'm getting LED lights in here. And there's our LED logo. And it's loading the windows. And we should be inside the windows with no issue. There we have it. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.